Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. My name's Thomas, and I'm your host. Thanks so much for tuning in. Tonight, we'll be exploring part of the Midlands in England. This is where the famous author J.R.R. Tolkien grew up and took inspiration for his famous books about Middle-earth. Although there aren't any mythical creatures or magical rings to be found, it's a great place to relax and eventually find some sleep. So, before we begin our story, let's make sure we're feeling calm, comfortable, and relaxed. Though there are plenty of people who seem to be able to fall asleep just about anywhere, or at least as soon as their head hits the pillow at night, for many of us, myself included, we need a bit more time to transition. So, remove any pressure you feel like you're putting on yourself to fall asleep. Just know that you will eventually drift off when your body and mind are ready. And the best thing you can do for yourself is to just relax and reassure yourself of that. Enjoy the coziness of your bed for now. The opportunity to lay in peace and tranquility. And hopefully you can enjoy the sound of my voice and the story I'm about to tell. It really does mean the world to be able to help you relax and fall asleep tonight and whenever you listen to the show. Though it may be from afar, I consider you and all the listeners around the world to be genuine friends. After all, without your presence here, Get Sleepy wouldn't be serving its purpose in the world. But with you here, we're serving the most meaningful purpose I could ever wish to be a part of. So, thank you, my friends. Enjoy a nice, deep breath in now, absorbing a sense of calm. And then, ease the air gently back out feeling your body sink deeper into the bed. We're ready to begin our adventure into Tolkien's world. In your mind's eye, picture an old water mill. It's a red brick building dating back to the 18th century with a narrow chimney at the side. The mill stands next to a tranquil pool of water. This is Sarehole Mill, and it's where our journey begins. You're standing on a grey, concrete pavement, with the mill just in front of you. Its narrow chimney reaches up, and the pool of water is still and quiet beside it. Today, you will enjoy a relaxing walk through this part of the Midlands. 
This is where J.R.R. Tolkien grew up, and it's the landscape that inspired portions of his children's novel, The Hobbit, and later his fantasy trilogy, The Lord of the Rings. These stories, which are set in the incredible fictional world of Middle-earth, have resonated with so many people. It's no wonder The Lord of the Rings is one of the best-selling book series of all time. The walk begins here at the mill, in the leafy suburb of Hall Green, in the southeast of Birmingham. From Sarehole Mill, your route will take you past Tolkien's former childhood home on Wake Green Road. You'll then walk further south and discover the enchanting Moseley Bog, the site of Tolkien's childhood adventures. Eventually, you'll finish your journey with a stroll through the gorgeous fields of the Shire Country Park. Right now, there is a steady stream of traffic on the road behind you, and a continuous gentle hum from the car's engines. Each car that passes brings with it a light whoosh of wind. You can feel the cool air against your skin. Any thoughts in your mind pass by just like these cars. The thoughts are not bothering you or distracting you. They're simply passing by. You are wearing lightweight, comfortable clothing with a soft sweater tied securely around your waist. The only thing you have with you is a small backpack containing a few essentials and a bottle of water. You feel light and free as you stand on the pavement knowing that there's no need for anything else. Ready to begin your journey, you step a little closer towards the mill. You're eager to get a better view. The mill is situated four miles south of central Birmingham, in the former village of Sarehole. This village influenced the Shire in The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien described Sarehole as kind of a lost paradise. It was his idyllic childhood haunt, a place he would explore for many hours. On this clear, bright, sunny day, with the mill looking so picturesque, you can understand why. If you know The Hobbit, you might be familiar with the mill. In the book, there are some references to the main character, Bilbo Baggins, passing by the mill in Hobbiton. These days, Sarehole Mill is a museum home to a permanent Tolkien exhibition. It's been said that while playing here, Tolkien and his brother were chased off by the miller's son. They nicknamed this boy the White Ogre because he was covered in flour from working in the mill. These encounters inspired the creation of Ted Sandyman, a character in Tolkien's stories who was also the son of a miller. 
when he was creating the magical world of Middle-earth, Tolkien took inspiration from the people and places around him. Sehol Mill and its surroundings are contained by a pale wooden fence. Just behind it lies a thick mass of dark green bushes and trees. Through the gaps in the foliage, you can see the outline of the red brick mill building with its pointy red roof. A tall chimney towers over it at the back. In the bright sunlight, you can see a reflection of the building and its surrounding greenery in the crystal clear mill pond. This reflection is slightly distorted by subtle, glistening ripples in the water. The pond is known to be a haven for wildlife. Herons, mallards, and moorhens are regular visitors. In the distance, you can see a dark bird shape by the waterside. You walk right up to the fence to get a closer look through the gaps in the foliage. The first thing that grabs your attention is the bird's bright red and yellow beak. Its body is coated in ruffled black feathers with white markings, and it has lime green legs and feet. This bird must be a moorhen, you think. You watch as he moves closer to the pond and slowly begins to float on the water's surface. He looks so peaceful and carefree as he happily bobs up and down with each gentle passing ripple. The moorhen makes a high-pitched chirp of contentment. You watch as he glides like a water skier across the pond towards the mill. He reaches a small, raised platform topped with grass and uses his wings to propel himself onto it. Then, he settles down and rests by the mill. As you look at the moorhen relaxing so calmly, you also feel relaxed and untroubled. You take in the delightful scene of the mill and the pond one last time and briefly close your eyes to capture it in your imagination. Then you take a deep breath, inhaling fresh air into your lungs, and exhale with a contented sigh. Turning to your left, you begin walking to your next destination. Tolkien's childhood home. As you walk on, you settle into a steady, comfortable pace. Above you, in the clear blue sky, is a bird flapping its wings, traveling in the same direction as you. You wonder if it is the moorhen you saw earlier, accompanying you on your journey. This thought brings a smile to your face. Not long after leaving the mill behind, you reach a busy roundabout. You wait patiently for a minute or two 
until there is a gap in the traffic. When it is safe, you cross and turn right onto Wake Green Road. Knowing that you can't be far away now, you're filled with excitement. As you continue along the road, a fellow walker approaches from the opposite direction. You smile and nod at him as he passes by, and he returns the gesture. Before long, you come to 264 Wake Green Road, or Five Gracewell as it was then known. Tolkien's family moved here in 1896, when he was four years old. It was the first Birmingham home that Tolkien lived in, and now it's one of the oldest houses in the area. You stop to look at it in more detail. The mock Tudor house sits in front of a row of other houses. There's a pretty front garden with a wide stone path, which has delightful patches of green grass on either side. The top floor of the charming two-story building is painted white with the addition of some dark brown timber strips for character. The ground floor features exposed brickwork with a white-framed bay window protruding from it. The shape of the house is slightly irregular, with a pointed roof and a section that juts out sheltering the sturdy green front door. Just like the other properties on the street, the house is contained by a small wooden fence with a gate. You wonder how many times Tolkien must have gone through this gate and the green door. When Tolkien lived here, the area was completely rural. He said that the time spent here was the happiest of his childhood. As the sun shines down on the houses, creating a shadow that surrounds them, you imagine what it would have been like in Tolkien's time. You too are filled with happiness, imagining these idyllic childhood days. In front of Tolkien's house is a patch of green grass running along the pavement. At the center is a tree, its green leaves shining in the sunlight like emerald jewels. The tops of larger trees are just visible behind the houses, swaying in the breeze. You can understand why Tolkien liked it so much, here on Wake Green Road. Even today, as cars cruise by, there's an ever-present sense of peace. Reaching into your backpack, you take out your water bottle. After a refreshing sip of water, you prepare to continue your adventure. The next stop is the enchanting Mosley Bog. In order to get there, you cross the road and retrace your steps. After a couple of minutes, you reach a road on your right. 
you follow the pavement and pass through more suburban streets before reaching the entrance to the bog. Mosley Bog was once a storage pool for Sarehole Mill. Today, it's a park and nature reserve. The beautiful Cold Bath Brook runs through the heart of it. The bog was the inspiration for the old forest on the edge of the Shire. In the book The Fellowship of the Ring, Tolkien described the old forest as ancient, a survivor of vast forgotten woods. It's also the perfect description for this woodland. On both sides, the entrance to the bog is guarded by a cluster of centuries-old trees. They vary in size, shape, and texture. Some are straight and tall, while others are twisted or leaning. Some trees have smooth bark, and others look rough and gnarled. You walk a little closer towards the trees. The deep, intriguing markings embedded in their bark expose their age. The leaves on the branches dance as a light gust of warm breeze passes by. It creates a wonderful rustling sound. Breathing in, you notice that the pleasant, earthy scent heightens as you enter the bog. The park is much the same as it was in Tolkien's day, other than the addition of a pale, wooden walkway. It veers off in different directions, winding through the trees. As you step onto the walkway, you reflect that this area must have been a fantastic place for Tolkien's childhood adventures. Further down the path, you spot two children in Wellington boots. They're paddling in the brook, just like Tolkien and his brother might have done. One child creates a small splash with her left foot, causing water droplets to fly into the air. She laughs and stomps her foot again, and the water sloshes over her wellies. You smile, seeing how much fun they are having, and then continue along the walkway. The noise of your shoes against the wooden planks creates a satisfying clip-clop sound. You continue to focus on this sound as you walk. It makes you feel calm and grounded. Before long, you come across another group of children They're climbing some of the twisted and bent trees. One boy, who must be about eight or nine, manages to reach a sturdy branch to sit on. He beams proudly, happy with his achievement. The bog really is a natural adventure playground for kids. Again, you can see why Tolkien would have enjoyed this place so much. You continue to follow the winding pathway. 
Some parts are muddy and damp, as they haven't yet been reached by the sun's rays through the trees. You take care when walking over the mud, and the clip-clop sound of your feet transforms into a light squelch. Just ahead of you, to the left, are a set of wooden steps that lead up to a wooden decked viewpoint. Keen to see the bog from a different angle, you head towards them and begin to climb. With each step, you get a little closer to the ancient treetops. The warmth from the sun is stronger now as the light pours through the gaps in the trees. Looking up, you see that the sun is glowing through a patterned blanket of clouds that has formed in the sky. In this moment, you feel completely at ease, standing calmly on the viewing deck. Below is a sea of green, made up of trees, grass, and moss. Every now and then, between the gaps in the greenery, you catch a glimpse of other people moving through the bog but you can't really hear them. It's so peaceful on this deck. The only sounds you can hear are the rustles of the leaves when the wind blows, and the delicate tweets of birds on nearby branches. The bog is both intriguing and tranquil. What a magical place, you think. After a quiet moment of admiring your surroundings, you take another sip from your water bottle. Feeling refreshed and ready to continue your journey, you climb back down the steps and onto the wooden walkway. You follow the path to the left until you reach a gate surrounded by trees. After passing through the gate and carefully shutting it behind you, you find yourself on a pavement beside another busy road. At first, it's strange to hear cars again, but the return of this gentle background hum is soothing. Once again, you become aware of your thoughts passing by, just like the traffic. You know everything will soon be quiet and peaceful when you reach the Shire Country Park. For now, you turn left and walk along the pavement, keeping a steady pace. The blanket of clouds has dispersed, and the sun washes over your skin. The pleasant warmth is a welcome feeling after being sheltered by the trees. There's very little breeze now and it's a beautiful temperature for walking. During this adventure, you've lost all track of time, but there's no rush today. You are able to enjoy the freedom of taking as long as you like. At the roundabout, you turn left again and continue along the pavement, noticing everything around you. Small birds fly in and out of the bushes that line the pavement. 
It looks like they are performing a dance routine. Then, a dog walker passes by. Their fluffy companion stops to sniff the ground below the bushes. You smile at them both before carrying on. And you keep walking until you see a familiar sight. On your left is Sarehole Mill, where you started this wonderful exploration. But this time, instead of stopping by the mill, you walk past it and turn left through the car park. As you make your way across the car park, you spot a pale, wooden sign by an opening. You can't quite make out the words just yet, so you continue to walk closer. It soon becomes clearer, and you realize that the sign reads, Welcome to the Shire. Country Park. You feel a sense of achievement, having reached the last stop on your journey through Tolkien's remarkable world. The park was named in 2005 to reflect Tolkien's connections with the local area. It is a nature reserve that follows the beautiful valley of the tranquil River Cole for some four miles. This park is made up of wetland, grassland, woodland, and heath, and is rich with wildlife. Just like the mill pond, herons, mallards, and moorhens often make an appearance here. You might even be lucky enough to spot a kingfisher hunting for fish. As you enter the park, you hear laughter from children playing and the soothing flow of the river. There is a vast, lush green field in front of you, which continues into the far distance. A straight golden pathway runs through the center of the field, parallel to the river. Vibrant pink, purple, and yellow flowers are reflected on the water's surface, which twinkles in the sunlight. Just as Tolkien described the Shire in his books, This park is beautiful and idyllic. And it's not just the river and the pathway that catch your attention. Along the left-hand side of the field is a wall of trees acting as a secure barrier, separating the park from the outside world. The trees offer shelter from the sun, but allow just enough light and warmth to creep through the gaps. The area beneath the trees looks very inviting. It's the perfect place to stop and sit for a while. With that thought, You yawn, stretch your arms, realizing you feel quite tired from all the walking today. Perhaps it's time for a rest, you think. After stepping onto the sponge-like grass and making your way towards the trees, you slip off your backpack and sit down. Untying your sweater 
from around your waist, you fold it up and place it on the ground. You rest your head on the soft sweater as you lie down, letting your arms and legs fall into a loose, relaxed position. Your limbs sink into the soft grass beneath you, and the earth takes your weight. Above, you can see the blue sky through the gaps in the trees, and feel the warm sunlight on your skin. There are very few clouds overhead. Your eyes start to feel heavy and sleepy. You blink a few times, trying to stay awake to take in the blissful atmosphere. But before long, keeping your eyes open becomes too much effort. Your eyelids gradually close, and you begin to tune into the sounds all around you. You can hear the faint laughter of children and the gentle rush of the river. Then there are the rustling leaves in the breeze and the sweet sound of birds tweeting. These sounds help you to unwind even further as your mind begins to drift and dream. You take a deep breath in and exhale with a satisfying sigh. Then you reflect on the extraordinary journey you've been on today. Near the beginning of your walk, there was the beautiful reflection of the mill in the pond, and the moorhen that you spotted by the water's edge. You recall Tolkien's childhood home, and your daydreams about what it would have been like to live there. Then, you're filled with the vivid memory of how peaceful you felt on the viewpoint in Mosley Bog. But which was your favorite part, you wonder? Maybe it was exploring the mystical land of the bog. Or perhaps it's this moment now resting in the Shire Country Park. Whichever it is, all thoughts are gradually becoming distant, thanks to Tolkien's relaxing world. And you know that you can easily return to this world whenever you need a moment of calm. Lying on the grass, still and at ease, your breathing becomes slower and quieter. You are completely at peace. And gradually, you slip into a deep and restful sleep.